First off, just a quick administrative matter for the Once Upon a Time reviews. For any of you who follow me on Twitter or like my Facebook page, please share your thoughts on the episode with me and then I will include them in the reviews. I want my channel to be the Once Upon a Time community on YouTube, so I really hope you all will share. Hopefully we can start this next week. I have a couple more collaborations planned for the season 5A finale and the season 5 finale overall. But starting next week, if you guys want to share your thoughts on the episodes, please do. And I will, you know, share your name and I will share your thoughts um, in the video. So hopefully we can start that next week. Obviously Joe is not here today. He's uh, busy tonight, but it is me. And now let's talk about Dreamcatcher. Dreamcatcher. Very, very good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. The promo had me thinking it was going in a totally different direction. I figured it was gonna focus a lot on Merida and Rumpel. Now, Merida and Rumpel did get some really good time in this episode, but it just completely went in a totally different direction, and I loved it. Now, Adam and Eddie both said this episode was a heartbreaker. Honestly, it didn't break my heart, but it definitely was a solid episode. Any episodes Adam and Eddie write, they're always really, really good. So I loved everything that happened in Camelot. It was absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing. I loved how Emma kind of uses her dark magic or kind of gave into her darkness just a little bit in that end with Merlin. Oops, spoiler, but we'll talk about Merlin in a second. I absolutely loved everything that happened with Emma and Regina. Swan Queen shipping right there. Adam and Eddie, like I said in my sneak peek review, they give out stuff to fans. So all of you who ship Swan Queen, this episode for you. So much cool interaction with Emma and Regina. I loved when Emma got to see Regina's, you know, first love Daniel get killed and she actually got upset by that. That was really, really awesome. I loved how Emma told Regina how she figured out that her parents were under King Arthur's spell. Another very cool part about this episode. Henry and Violet. I liked how it fit into the overall story. I didn't really care for it at first, but I actually kind of felt bad for Henry because I know how he feels. So I liked that Emma, you know, used Henry's tear to free Merlin from the tree. And that was really cool. And then Merlin at the end of the episode said to Emma, you need to want to be free from the darkness. And I thought that was another really cool thing because she's kind of getting corrupted by the power. The power is sort of taking over. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And Emma might like the power. Like Ruppel said in the season five premiere, everyone who drinks from that well becomes addicted. And I think Emma might have a little addiction, though I do have to admit, I love how her magic, when she uses it, is actually yellow or like light, um, or very, um, can't think of a color, like twilight or, or sunset. I just like how it's not black or red. And then I really like the scene when she freed Rumpel from the tree and she was using light and dark magic at the same time. That was the chaos magic that I've been dying to see on the show. So the Camelot fla flashbacks, excuse me, were pretty much that. They were really, really good. Lots of Emma and Regina. Uh, Emma built a many, many, I was gonna say a million, but she didn't build that many, probably 20 or 30 dream catchers, and that's how she stole the memories. How she got them back to Camelot, or from Camelot to Storybrooke, still a mystery, but still very cool, because now we figured out that Emma ripped out Violet's heart to make Violet break Henry's heart so that way they could free Merlin from the tree. Now Merlin's interactions with Emma ended with what I had said that he said to her, you know, you need to want to be free from the darkness, so hopefully we'll see him next episode and more along those lines. Those are Really cool. I really actually like how the way Ellie and I just portray him. Like Charming said, he was expecting someone old. We all were sort of expecting that. Granted, we knew Elliot Knight and who he was, but I'm believing it right now. He looks really good. So the Camelot flashbacks, very good. Henry did a lot in this episode, and I'm not Henry's biggest fan, but I give Henry credit. So good for you, Henry. Then in Storybook, in the sneak peek, we talked about Emma and Henry and the horse and how I didn't like it. And I still didn't like it, but I liked how it fit into the overall context, particularly the last eight minutes of the episode when Regina came up to um, Emma or, you know, Emma came to Regina's house. It actually kind of reminded me of the price in the reverse uh, scenario. And I actually kind of expected Regina to telepathically or telekinetically shut the door behind Emma. But I really did like the interaction, how Emma you know, is pretty much justifying what she did and how Regina kind of says, like, I'm the one who's telling you what you're doing is wrong. It's bad. It's really bad. I also really like, I think I already said it, but I do really like the dream catcher um, thing going on. And Neil was mentioned several times in this episode. I'm not a big fan of Neil, but I will give Neil credit. Hey, he definitely helped Emma in some way. This episode overall has had a lot of great moments in it. Emma and Regina, beautiful moments in both Storybrooke and in Camelot. I absolutely loved it. Then everyone figured out what's going on with 
um, Emma and Excalibur. And that was also very interesting. And then Arthur even told them that the Dark One's blade is part of Excalibur. I didn't expect him to reveal that. I'm very, very, very happy that he said that to them. Because Arthur still has this villain persona going on. Also, where the hell is Merlin in the storybook? But I'm really wondering, like, what's going to be going on with Arthur now that everyone knows that part of the truth? And then, like I said, where is Merlin in storybook? Then the last part of the episode to quickly discuss is Merida and Rumble. It was okay. I kind of expected it to be more. I liked how Merida used Belle um, or the teacup to get Rumble to be, you know, brave. And I use quotations around that because he really wasn't brave. He was more so angry. But overall, I thought this episode was absolutely fantastic. One of the best of season five so far. Granted, we've only had five episodes, but episode five of four and five have been really great. I loved Raking Glass. I loved Dreamcatcher, and I think it was fantastic. So let me know your thoughts about the episode in the comments below. Thank you so much for tuning into my recap and review of it. So much went down. Great character development. The visual effects even looked really great. Sometimes they're not so very awesome. But this one, very good. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. So thank you so much for tuning in. I will do a trailer review of um, episode six in a few minutes to follow this. I don't want to talk about that now because a lot went down in that trailer too. Very excited. So thank you so much for tuning into this review. And I will talk to you all in the comments below. And like I said, if you guys want to share your thoughts during the next, com next coming episodes, please do. And I will include you in the videos. So thank you all for watching. And I'll talk to you all later. Bye, guys.